I got involved through my own health journey, probably about over 10 years ago. I had my own gut health and digestive issues and that sort of led me on the path of learning how I could support myself and reduce my symptoms and then I got into naturopathy and then went on to study a Bachelor of Health Science in naturopathy and have been practicing since. So what, what were the main sort of issues? Uh, for me it was uh, lots of bloating, lots of um, yeah just digestive discomfort, you know swinging bowels, you know not regular, yeah. all those types of things and you know, as a 21 year old, it was uncomfortable and embarrassing and clothes in a bit just from eating one meal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I couldn't get sort of answers from the traditional way. So, I went about doing my own research and connecting with holistic practitioners and mm -hmm. was able to get some answers and results. Yeah. I only ask because I think a lot of us do experience that at some point in our life, like the, the symptoms that you mentioned as well so and uh, you know we've all we've all had our highs and lows with our health haven't we yeah and, I mean right. we're not always there at that perfect point you know we're young we we go through different phases of not understanding or uh, you know I always say knowledge is power so when we know better we do better that's exactly right yeah, yeah. and I don't know I don't think I've met anyone who's 100% perfect or yeah. lives life symptom free but we just do the best we can when we can yeah. Um, That's a good point. Yeah, and then it makes up for the times when we are busy or things are happening, we've supported our body so we can get through that period a little bit easier. I'm, I'm glad you said it like that too because it's good not to put too much pressure on ourselves and think, oh, you know, I've got to do it perfect all the time and if I, did, if I was stressed that day or I ate wrong and I wasn't mindful and I, and I didn't sleep enough, people can put pressure on themselves. Yeah. So yeah. to know that it's, it's going to be out of whack sometimes. Yeah, you to just, just have to do the best you can. Yeah. yeah. That's a good starting point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that happened to me even last year. We went to Kangaroo Island and didn't realise how booked out the restaurants were going to be. So we ended up at IGA and yeah. we have not much to yeah. choose from, but we just had to do what we could and make it work. What and you, every other day we, we eat well. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. What, what did you make from IGA? I think we ended up with some, and we are also glamping, so we didn't have cooking facilities. Oh, right. So I think we ended up with some two minute noodles and um, and just yeah just whatever we could get yeah. it wasn't very good at all not that I would recommend <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so you sort of felt it straight away when you when you sort of ate that sort of food you, you actually don't even enjoy it even if it's just a once off here and there just those like noodles it's like okay let's yeah. get back into it yep yep exactly like I used to be someone who would enjoy something like that but yeah. even now you can feel it straight away and it just doesn't feel as um, nourishing and yeah. as wholesome as a, a, a nice cooked meal would be absolutely Absolutely. And you know, a lot of people say that it does take time, but you know, these days, I think, like we were saying just before we jumped on air, that you know, people are more aware now of health and wellness, and it doesn't have to take that long. I think it's more we think it's going to take like two, three hours to prepare dinner, but it doesn't. You know, you boil up a few things, you cut a few veggies, it's half an hour. That's right. Yeah. 40 minutes tops. Yeah. And just um, knowing a few good recipes and having a good few good things up your sleeves can make life so much easier. I also like to cook in bulk, so you cook once, eat a few times. Okay. So for so example, how many days? Well, it just depends. Like if I'm if I'm just cooking for me, it might last a few lunches. Like I can keep in the fridge okay. and heat up. But even last night, I knew I'd be home late tonight, so mm. I cooked extra. Okay. So then there's. Yeah. Dinner when we get home, we don't have to worry. We're not hungry and looking for food. It's just ready. Yeah. It's nutritious and it makes life easier. It doesn't always have to be hard. Mm. Mm. And you're also saying to me earlier that uh, it's also good to have veggies every meal and protein every meal. Well, it's a good idea to try and get your veggies in at every meal. The Australian Dietary Guidelines recommend five handfuls of vegetables a day doesn't sound like a lot but when you actually try and do it that's a lot of vegetables to try and eat. Yeah. How so many different veggies? A, well a variety is better. But, um, Half a dozen. Yeah so whatever you can get in ideally but five handfuls um, and yeah that can be quite hard so the easiest way I find to do that is to eat one handful with breakfast so whether you throw some spinach into a smoothie yeah. or um, something with your eggs mm. Um, or an omelette with some vegetables in it, and then do two handfuls with lunch and two handfuls with dinner. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's good doing that in the smoothie. Yeah, yeah. You spinach can as well so is a bit. A lot of people might not love her. Yeah. But in a smoothie, you can mix. What would you mix it with? Well, I um, I normally start my smoothies with a, a frozen banana, um, some sort of nut milk. I prefer prefer nut milks over dairy. That's just me personally. Um, and so I'll have like almond milk or coconut milk, and then I'll normally add a handful of blueberries. Um, and then whatever vegetables I've got. So it might be a handful of baby spinach. You can even do frozen broccoli, which um, tastes pretty good. Oh, nice. Frozen cauliflower. Um, even this morning I put um, the tops of the radishes we've grown in our garden, the greens, yeah. throw that in there. And you can't taste it as much. Um, you can't really taste it at all if you put the right, right amount in. Yeah. But not too many fruit and veg because can some clash or not? Yeah, definitely, and it always depends on the person. So if you're someone mm -hmm. who um, you know suffers with bloating or digestive discomfort, you might not want to go too hard with sugars, including fruits. Like banana, um, it could be yeah, too sweet. Yeah, it? it could be too much, even berries. Yeah. Um, but just keeping it gentle and um, in small amounts rather than going too much. So like half. Yeah, you could start with half a banana um, and, you know, trying to do it just as it goes ripe. So not green because that can upset your tummy, mm. but not too, um, too ripe either because yeah. then the sugars are a lot higher. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. And with a nut milk, do you sort of make it at home or do you recommend that's better than buying it? Um, it is better than buying it because... Um, there are a lot of fillers in some of the nut milks. Yeah, I have noticed that. Yeah, I like buying the Nutty Bruce one, so, which is it's in the um, fridge section of the supermarket, and it's mostly I'm pretty sure it's just nuts. Like it's, really? Yeah. What you can get that from like? Yeah, I can get it from Foodland. Yep, yeah. and I I'm not sure if like the big um, supermarkets have them, but they have their own oh, versions. It's in the it's cold, so it's not a um, shelf stable yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot do have, isn't it, sunflower oil and salts and yes. some malt and yeah. All sugars. And, and if the, I think the almond milk I looked at recently, it said like 2% almond. Yeah. I thought, okay, so really I'm not having almond milk, I'm having everything yeah. else milk. Yeah, it's the same with some apple juices. Like it, you look at the back and there's only a really small percentage yeah. of apples in there. Mm. So it's the same with all processed food really. If it's got to sit on a shelf for a long mm. time, they're going to have to put other things in there that are not necessarily good for us. Right, okay. So it, so it is good to, to Google a few recipes on how to make your own uh, nut milk. Yeah, yeah. It's quite easy to make it yourself. Um, you just need to, uh, yeah, you need a good powerful blender. Mm. That's the only thing. So you soak your nuts and then blend them up yeah. to as small as you can. And then you just strain it, and that's how you milk it. That's it, it. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, what was I thinking? Um, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Um, why do we have to soak them? Um, so that helps to activate them. Um, it also just makes them softer, and you get more out of them. Um, but yeah, I think that's the main reason. I'm not a hundred percent sure with um, when you're making nut milk, um, but yeah, that's it. Just helps to soak them overnight. They'll break down a lot easier and easier to digest. So good. Uh, what's the bag called? The special bag that you're trying I to? I think they might be now just called nut milk bags. Oh, okay. But yeah, just you need a, um, or you can use like a really, really fine material, like a natural fibre, but you want it to be really fine. And strong. Because yeah. I, was, I was making a nut milk this morning, I was squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And I thought, oh gosh, can you imagine if it wasn't a strong bag and it's split? So yeah. you need to get the right one, don't you? Yeah. You know, I've seen some uh, websites say, you know, use a stocking or, you know, clean stocking. Yeah, no, they would, I think they break so yeah. easily. Yeah. Like doubled. But yeah. Yeah, you, you, there's so many bits of information you can find. But yeah, you can find anything on the internet. Yeah, absolutely. It's all there. So there's no excuse for us not buying. That's right. <laughs> and some healthy fats as well. Yeah, so healthy fats are a good, um, something good to have with breakfast. So they're things like avocado, eggs, fish, nuts. Um, and they help to keep us fuller for longer. So if you're somebody who crashes with energy in the afternoon, so you get to that 3 p.m. and you just crash, you probably need to up your healthy fats at the beginning of the day and even lunchtime. Exactly. And, yeah, that'll keep you going a bit longer because when we have those crashes and we want that sugar, 
It's our body just wanting quick energy because we haven't given it enough energy. That's right. So getting it in early will help you later on in the day. That's right. That's the importance of eating breakfast. We always hear people say they're not hungry in the morning, but we really need to eat in the morning and eat a good lunch and eat the biggest meal at yeah. lunchtime. I sort of think it's the first meal of your day. So some people benefit from fasting for a little bit longer in the morning, but that first meal, so whatever you eat first, make sure it's nutrient rich because that's going to set you up. Whatever you break your fast with, make sure it's something good, not just like a packet of chips yeah. or yeah, lollies or something like that. Make sure it's nutrient, nutrient dense. So you think the biggest meal should be for breakfast? Uh, not necessarily. Like I benefit from a good, or in the past I've benefited from a big breakfast. I've sort of changed things up recently. Yeah. Um, but I just think that first meal, um, if, you, if it's full of like just like carbohydrate, plain carbohydrate or sugars, you'll get an energy crash later on in the day. Yeah. So even if it is, like you can bulk your smoothies up with good fats, you can add avocado. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it all helps for the end of the day. So if you're crashing the end of the day, you probably need to look at your food earlier in the day. Okay. Um, and if you could just go through tea and coffee with us. Yep. Um, the, the, what we should do. Yeah, sure. So. Once again, everyone's different, so everyone's going to benefit differently or not have tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. um, but listen to your body. So tea um, can be and coffee, they can be quite dehydrating. So if you're not drinking enough water, then tea and coffee can contribute to um, an unhappy gut and make things sort of dehydrated and stiff and things can't move through nicely. Um, so yeah, making sure you're balancing that out with water. And then if you're drinking coffee and you're feeling anxious or um, you know it's contributing to your bowels, which a lot of people it is, it makes their bowels more urgent, um, then potentially coffee's not the best option yeah. for you. Yeah, that or, or you need to do some work on your gut first to be able to digest it properly. It might be a little bit too much for your liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the liver process is a lot of the coffee and if, so if you're feeling anxious, particularly anxious, it could be that your liver just can't break down coffee very well mm. and you might need a little bit of support there. Okay. And what are some foods, I, I want to talk a little bit about leaky gut, but before we do that, mm -hmm. what, what are some sort of foods that are good for the liver? Is it like lemon water and things like that? Yeah, lemon water can be good for the liver. Um, leafy greens are yeah. really good for the liver, so they have lots, lots of the nutrients that the liver likes. Um, so yeah, if I'm recommending to somebody to support their liver, I would say try and get leafy greens, yeah. um, the brassica family of vegetables, so things like broccoli, um, cabbage, those types of things, the liver will, will benefit from those foods. Cooked cabbage? Cooked or raw. So have, mm -hmm. yeah, raw, um, yeah. you just have to make sure you, you're chewing it and once again, if your gut is struggling to digest it, then maybe... Um, Cooked would be better for you. So anything cooked is a bit easier. To yeah, digest. it's a little bit easier for a, um, a gut to digest if it's cooked, especially this time of year. Mm. Yeah, things yeah. cooler. Yeah, so we want to look for those more warming foods to stimulate digestion. Mm. So autumn and winter have more warm foods like soups and stews. Yes, yeah. We generally crave those things anyway, but yeah, just trying to go with the flow of the, the seasons and supporting our bodies that way. So are we instinctively trying to warm ourselves up from within because yeah. it's cold outside? Is that yeah, what it is? Yeah, to, um, yeah warm fat ourselves us, up. We need the fats to get yeah. extra fat on, our, on us? Uh, yeah, but you know, not too much either because yeah. we don't want too much fat around our organs. It's probably better just to rug up. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, yeah, we naturally want to be warm because you know when you think of being cold, it, everything's stiff and mm -hmm. um, held together. Where we want, especially the gut, we want it to be free flowing and um, contracting, so it's detoxing and moving out waste for us. So things like warming broths and soups can be really nourishing for a gut to stay relaxed and that digest. Makes sense. Yeah. And the same with the warm water, not the same. That's right. Yeah. So drinking warm water. Yeah. Be, um, helping that way as well and, and herbal teas yeah mm -hmm. okay and the amounts of water um, so I like to recommend two to three liters of water a day um, it depends on the person's 
um, body type and how much uh, exercise or how um, much energy they're using through the day and how much they have to replenish their bodies. Yeah. But I think if you can aim to get three liters in on a good day, and then you know if you're having a really busy day the next day, at least you've hydrated yourself the day before. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, three it is, liters. It is, oh, that's twelve glasses. Yeah, it's it is. That. It is yeah. a lot, um, you know, it, it is a lot, but my, um, my tip is to start early. Mm -hmm. So I actually created a challenge for um, people on my email list and my social media. It's called the One Leader Before 11 a.m. Challenge. And it's just a free challenge I've got on my website. And basically the aim is to try and drink one liter of water before 11 a.m. And it just makes life so, so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's four glasses. Yeah. So you That's know, doable if you're getting up at six. Yeah, so if you wake up, have a glass of water, yeah. yep. um, you know, just slowly slip on your drink bottle through the morning, mm -hmm. you can quite easily get there, especially if you're focused on it. Yep. And then that sets you up for the day. You've got one litre in, and you're not trying to get it all in at the end of the day, and then you're up all night using your bladder. So that's the yeah. way I try and get people to do it, is trying to drink one litre before 11 a.m., and then it just kind of blows from there. And I suppose we want to stop at a certain time so we're not, it's not disturbing our sleep. That's right, we don't want to, anything to disturb our sleep. But eight or nine stop, maybe yeah, earlier yeah. even. Yeah, I mean some people, once you sort of uh, used to drinking that much water, you might be okay. Like mm -hmm. I can have a glass of water before bed sometimes or a cup of tea um, yeah. and then that's not going to wake me through the night. So just, yeah, knowing your limits mm -hmm. and then if you do wake in the night, maybe bring it back a mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Awesome. And it's also it's good for our eyes too. They say you know you can tell someone someone's health from the eyes, and it makes your eyes white and bright. Yeah. The water. Yeah, your skin, everything. everything. So yeah, eyes have um, you know they need to be hydrated. If um, once again you know they're they're moving all the time, so dry eyes can mm. cause lots of problems. But yeah, water is so good. Like we can't live without water. Yeah. We could go a few probably weeks without food if we had to. I'm not recommending that. But it yeah. only lasts a few exactly. days without water. Yeah. Mm. All right. So uh, if you could just explain leaky gut for us as well. Yeah. That's so a big one. Leaky gut's a term to um, describe a, a gut that. So basically, the lining of our gut walls is yeah. like a skin. So it's a skin that uh, is strong enough not to let the wrong kinds of proteins through but it's permeable enough to let nutrients um, flow through to the blood that can be used around our body. Um, but when we uh, uh, have things like poor diet, stress, long-term medication, it can um, upset this lining of the gut wall and cause it to become leaky. So then proteins that shouldn't leach through to the blood can leach through. Oh, wow. And then that, you know, then there's these proteins that are um, floating around the body that shouldn't be there and then our immune system kicks in and starts you know going into overdrive and it can lead to things like autoimmune conditions and it's linked to lots of different um, conditions like that and like we were talking about earlier everything starts in the gut mm -hmm. so even if we're thinking about um, viruses and bacteria if they enter our body through the mouth and hit the gut first we want that gut wall to be nice and strong so it doesn't get into our blood and make us sick. Right. Um, so it's it's also a part of our immune system. I think it's 70 to 80 percent of the immune system is in the gut. So yeah that it just um, leaky gut is kind of yeah a term for the the gut walls not the structure of the gut being out and weak. So if someone has leaky gut, can it be 100% repaired over time or is it always going to be damaged? Um, I guess it depends on the person and their situation and how much they're willing to change and all at once. Uh, I think it can definitely be reversed, um, it, but it just depends on the person and... and um, the damage that was done. Exactly, and then what they're continuing to put into their body. So, you know, they're yeah. eating inflammatory foods, like mm -hmm. these processed foods with the vegetable oils and mm -hmm. stuff we're talking about. Um, that's going to continue to cause inflammation and continue just to, It's kind of like if you think about your skin, 
and you continue just to scratch it or cut it, it's going to break even if you put a band-aid on it and you keep scratching. Yeah. You want to give it time to heal and give it the right nutrients and support and then it will eventually get better. So if, if someone had a mild case of it and then they ate, did everything perfectly right, well not perfect but close to perfect, it could go back to what it was? Potentially, yeah. It was like a moderate issue? Yeah, potentially it could. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just what, it depends on the person and um, also, you know, what's going on because it's not only about that structure, that, that lining of the gut, it's also about the gut bugs that are in there, so the bacteria that are in there. Mm, so everything, isn't it? That's right. So once again, you could be giving your body all the right nutrients to try and heal that gut, but if you're in an environment that's um, contributing to maybe... Uh, not great environment for gut bugs and potentially it, it might not get better. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think it's worth mentioning stress too because, you know, like we've said other times, people can do everything right, eat well, meditation, this and that, exercise, good food, top quality food, but if we're worrying and stressed or we can't manage our stress the right way or, or we haven't got that balance and that's really bad because of you know our emotions you know when we stress we release chemicals into our stomach yeah that's right that's so, not going to be a good thing yeah when we're stressed our body naturally goes into a fight or flight mode to protect mm. us so it starts producing different hormones and um, different things to protect our body to survive so digestion yeah. things like that become less of a priority so we want to, and our lifestyles now, everyone's got a bit of stress, no, no of matter course. what. So we need to do things to sort of balance that out or remove as much stress as we can yeah. to kick our bodies back into rest and digest mode mm -hmm. and not be chronically in that yeah. state of fight or flight. So we, we're doing that through a bit of exercise too, mild exercise yeah. helps with that? Yeah, mild exercise yeah. for sure, gentle walking, getting out in nature meditating or even just breath work so sometimes the word meditation can seem a bit overwhelming and that you have to be zen and mind calm but even if you can just take five minutes to breathe um, and just come back to your breath and focus on your breath um, it makes such a difference and it's not it sounds easy because we all breathe every day mm -hmm. but it's actually a practice like we have to learn to breathe and unwind so the more you practice, it's like a muscle. The more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Yeah. So, any tips? Uh, for me, it's just making time for it. Mm. So, um, making time every day to stop and breathe. And for me, it works first thing in the morning. So, you know, get up, um, sort of get myself and the cat organized, and then I'll go and sit down and just breathe. And um, just try and do it for five minutes. And I've also been journaling uh, this Love last that. month, and I've noticed huge changes just from journaling. Well, you only just started. Well, last I've month. done it on and off over the years, but never done it consistently. And okay. I set a challenge for um, my Instagram and my social media community just to. Um, I set a challenge once a month, and this month was journaling. So all it has to be is just writing a page, and yeah, I I feel so much clearer and focused. Yeah just going into the day. But is it, can you go to it, some people like to do it in the morning and night or do you just do it once? Yeah, for me I just do it once. Um, I find if you uh, get a bit overwhelmed in your day and just need a bit of a clearer focus, the morning's probably better. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who finds it hard to unwind and sleep, then probably night's, night's better for you. What are you doing? I'm just doing the morning. Morning. And yeah, and there's lots of different types as well. It's gratitude journaling. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it helps to write a letter, so I use the universe, you know, write a letter to the universe, it could be a god or a loved one, whoever, mm -hmm. and I would basically just say thank you for whatever I'm grateful for for that day, um, what I need help with, so if you please help me with this, um, send me the right people to connect with for this, and then I also write down my goals for the year and month. Um, and that's really helped me to focus on those things instead of them just writing them at the start of the year and forgetting them. So that's a very powerful goal setting, isn't it? Yes. Because it sits somewhere in our subconscious and it, it does activate there, it does something. Yeah, 
Yeah, it definitely does. And I was talking about this um, yesterday and saying, you know, it can be a little bit of woo-woo that you think you attract these things because of the universe or some higher power. But I think it also just shifts your focus. So when you see these opportunities come up, you can just say yes to them rather than exactly. being all muddled in the head and not seeing those opportunities. That's right. It's about our mindset too, like you said, taking the opportunity and it's the confidence yeah. to do it. Yeah. Because I think self doubt's a part of being human. Yeah. Is our natural like first go to, oh I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but we can. Exactly. Yeah. But we've got to convince this that we can. Exactly right. And it doesn't take much work. Like we you know, thoughts are powerful. One positive thought is so powerful. We just have to put the positive thought in and then it takes care of itself. Yeah. We don't have to fight and say, well, I'm asking that. It doesn't have to be hard and a struggle. Yeah. It's so interesting. It is. Yeah, it is. And even just that power of gratitude and being grateful for things, like it, it brings you back. You know, we live in a world where it's always, I want, I need, I want more. You know, how do we get to the next exactly. step? Whereas if we just come back to what we're grateful for, you know, we've got a, like, we've got a lot of great things happening for us right now. And it, it just makes you enjoy life a little bit. And you do hear people saying that sometimes it's never enough, like once they've reached one goal post, it's like, okay, now what? Well, that's good, but it's boring now after a few minutes. So now what? To keep going and keep going. And it's, it's that never ending search for, for we don't even know what sometimes. So like you said, gratitude is so good. Yeah. Because we can be happy now. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a far away thing. No. And it could be as simple as, you know, having a warm bed or, um, having nourishing foods or connecting with great people you know even I stopped at the IGA before coming here and the young boy said to me he's like geez you look really nice today oh, wow. and I was like well wow, that's such a like yeah. he, he didn't know what kind of day I had but that's yeah. something I can be grateful for you know exactly there's nice people to connect with to say world. something nice yeah and it doesn't cost anything and it's not hard to do yeah. You know, a lot of people sort of might think something good, but they might not say it because they might think also how they're going to take it. They yeah. might take it the wrong way. You know, in this day and age, yeah. someone might think that they're being hit on or something, or someone yeah. might think, oh, better not say it. They might think that I like them. Or, but it's not. Yeah. He, just he was just saw that you look lovely and yeah, he said you look lovely. And, and yeah, and that, I guess good. Yeah, that is something that um, I could, like, you know, if I had a terrible day and was in a terrible Same. situation. Tomorrow I can write that in my journal. Like yeah. I'm grateful that there's good people in the world that can change my day around. Yeah. Yeah. And like we're here um, also, we don't know what someone's going through. I, I exactly. like to, to remind myself of that. Yeah. But you know, someone could be all, everything look A-OK, -okay, but we, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So one nice little compliment or even Jeez, a smile. Say. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> all right. A anything else before we finish off? And how can people contact you? Yeah, so uh, people can contact me through my website, it's just um, kirstyking.com.au. Um, I also spend quite a bit of time on Instagram, um, which is just Kirsty King Naturopathy. Um, and yeah, I've got my one liter before 11 challenge on my website if you mm -hmm. need some help drinking more water. I'll do that tomorrow. And <laughs> I set a monthly challenge every month just to, to, to find little ways we can try new things to support our health. Excellent. And, and I like that, that, you know, that those challenges, that's good. Yeah, it's just trying something new and, you know, who know you might not have known that journaling worked for you. You might not have known that journaling doesn't work for you, but at least you've given it a go for that's 30 right. days and see if it makes a change yeah. for you. Because some people say it's not for them, but then you hear them say, you see them a few years, a few years later and say, well, I need to do it now, or well, they're ready, yeah. they're open now, they were yeah. too busy before, yeah. or they weren't in the mindset. So we can't rule it out. That, that's not us. We're not that type of person, but we can be. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you just need it at different points mm. in your life. Yeah, like you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Kirsty, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was great. Thank you.